What's going on everyone? I'm T-Dubs Kid and it looks like I just hit 10,000 miles on this bike. Yet I have the stock bar still on here. So I think it's probably time for an upgrade because these bars are pretty low and I didn't really realize that until I rode my friend's KLX 250 after he had just put new bars and risers on it and it felt so nice. So today I'm going to upgrade these bars because I think it's kind of the reason why my back gets so sore after really long rides and also the T-Rex needs to be able to reach the bars. <laughs> So here I have the Rox Speed Effects 2 inch risers. They're made right here in the US of A, and they're the swiveling kind, so you can move them back and forth. These are not really cheap. However, you can find a cheap Chinese knockoff version that looks very, very similar to this. The only difference would be is these are milled from like a block of aluminum versus the cheap Chinese ones, which are cast aluminum. So they have the potential to have air pockets and stuff in them, which might make them a lot weaker. But these are cool because they go from a 7 8 uh, which is the stock handlebar diameter um, up to a, either a 7 8 or they have a little spacer that you can remove and you can put 1 and 1 8 inch handlebars in here so they're very versatile next i have some pro taper contour bars these are the windham rm mid bend they have different bends you can get but i got these because they are more comparable to stock height wise um, because I didn't want to go way, way too high with the risers, uh, so I don't have many problems with my cables. We'll see how that goes in just a minute. These are 1 and 1 eighth inch in the center, and then they taper out to 7 eighths of an inch, uh, which is what stock is. And that is so you don't have any problems with uh, transferring over the controls and stuff like that. And with being thicker in the center, it gets rid of the crossbar, which does two things. It makes it easier to attach handguards and accessories and stuff without that crossbar getting in the way. And it allows these to flex a little bit more while still being strong with that thicker center and then of course I got some brand new pillow top grips I love the pillow tops and some uh, spooky spider web grip donuts and then I got some brand new highway dirt bikes handguards on the way because this one is really really bent or it's the handlebar that's really really bent I don't know which but I'm gonna be installing that in a separate video so let's go ahead and get started all right, to start this out, I'm going to be removing my old handguards and this LED light pod, but don't worry, I'm going to be making a how-to video on it after I get the handguards on. I'll just go ahead and remove the grip donuts, then take a razor blade and slice off the old grips since I won't be reusing them. So it looks like I went a little too crazy removing the handguards and I cracked the throttle tube. So it looks like I'm gonna have to get a new one. Next, I'll remove my ram mount and the little plastic belts that hold the wires to the handlebar. I'll use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws for the clutch lever and the mirror mount. Be careful because it's easy to round out the head since these screws tend to be fairly tight. To remove the left cluster switch, there are two Phillips screws at the bottom. I previously had some electrical tape under this to keep it from moving. Moving over to the right side, I'll use a 10mm wrench to remove the clamp for the front brake lever and master cylinder assembly. I'll just lay this to the side being careful not to hit the tank. Be aware if you lay it upside down like I did, it could introduce air into the system and should be bled after you're all done. I'll also be making a brake fluid change and bleed video later on. If your TW is pre-2001, you will not have a hydraulic front brake and this will look different. Now I will remove the right side switch cluster that is held on by a plate and two Phillips screws on the rear. Make sure to remember which screws go to which part. There are two more Phillips screws for the throttle tube assembly and these ones are two different lengths. And also don't forget about this plastic spacer. Fold the rubber cover back and the assembly comes off in halves. After removing the two cables, the throttle tube will just slide right off. Now the handlebars are ready to be removed with a 12mm. Also one thing worth noting is that both of the handlebar clamps have a little notch that faces towards the front. Here's a quick comparison of the bars. The stock one bends back and up a little bit more than the pro tapers, but they seem to be pretty close height wise. Next, I'll thread the stock clamps on with that little dot on the front and slide the risers in as far as they will go with the logo facing outwards. Just snug them up a bit so they will still move but stay in place. 
Place the new bars on and evenly snug up the new bar clamps, making sure the bars are centered. I'll just somewhat tighten everything down for now to keep it from moving while I figure out the cables. There are also cut marks at the ends of these bars, but I don't recommend cutting them off since they are already just about the same length as stock, just with a different bend. First things first is I picked up a new throttle tube from my local motorcycle shop. This one is made with aluminum and has a removable cap for handguards. It's not exactly meant to fit the TW200 but has the exact same cable pole end. The only difference is, is that it's a bit longer and has this ring. But no problem, I'll just carefully grind off that ring with a grinding wheel and finish it off with some sandpaper and steel wool, then mark how much I need to take off the end. I'll use a hacksaw until I get bored and break out the Dremel tool and a little more sandpaper and boom, once you throw the cap on, it's an exact match to the stock throttle tube. So it looks like the throttle cables won't reach in the upwards position, so I'll have to rotate them down. Also keep in mind that the cables will change in length as you turn it lock to lock. One side they will have more slack and the other side they will have less slack. The throttle tube and the right switch cluster have alignment pins that fit in the holes on the stock handlebars. This is to keep them from spinning which is especially important for the throttle tube. Before I drill any holes I'm going to test fit everything. Looks like the brake cable does not have enough length. To fix this I removed the front plastic with a big Phillips screwdriver and it unclips from two rubber bushings at the top. Then I removed the headlamp by unbolting two 10mm bolts on each side and it slides upward off the little rubber grommets at the bottom. So it turns out there's a zip tie holding the brake line to the bottom of the light holder frame. I'll just snip that off and the one for the main front wiring harness as well. That will definitely give me some more room for the brake hose, but I don't really like how all the wires will be sandwiched behind it, so I'll go ahead and unplug all of the connectors and run the wiring in front of the brake hose. Remember that some of the wires and connectors are the same, so be sure to remember where they go before disconnecting them. You could remove the brake line and route that around the wires instead, but it could get messy and you would definitely need to bleed the brakes after. However, rerouting would be easy if you had an older cable activated drum brake. Now I have plenty of room for that front brake hose to reach. And the rubber grommet will be touching the steering instead of the wires. And since everything for the front brake is on the steering part, the slack stays the same no matter which way you turn. I'll go ahead and zip tie the main harness back to where it was, making sure it has plenty of room when you turn lock to lock. Then I'll just reinstall the headlight in the front cover in reverse order and make sure everything is tucked in nice and neat. With everything removed on the right side of the handlebar, I wrapped it in some electrical tape up to about where the alignment pin on the throttle would be. Then I installed the throttle tube switch cluster and brake, but I kept everything loose so they could move freely. I moved everything to the exact spot I wanted it to be in, then I tightened down the switches and the throttle. Then I made sure there was enough slack on lock to lock turns. I also made sure a little bit of the handlebar was poking out of the throttle tube. This is because the handguards I'm getting will tighten down flush on the end. I removed it all again, but this time I have the exact spots I need to drill holes for the alignment pins. Then I used a center punch and a hammer on each mark and removed the tape. I matched up a drill bit for each alignment pin since they are slightly different sizes. Also you would be fine not drilling a hole for the switch cluster, but I would really recommend doing this for the throttle. These bars have thick walls so no need to drill all the way through, just enough so the pin will go all the way in. Before installing the throttle tube for the final time, I'll just squeeze in some cable lube and apply a little bit of white lithium grease to the throttle tube contact points. Install one cable at a time and wrap around so the cables run on top of the raised end of the throttle tube. Hold the cables together as you slide the caps on. Find its predestined spot so the alignment pin slides in, then install the screws. Remember they are different sizes. The longer one needs to go closest to the cables. Install the switch cluster and remember the plate goes on only one way, but the screws are the same length on this one. Throw on the brake lever assembly and snug it up making sure the cap is pointed up. Once it's positioned in the right spot, I'll tighten it down. This one doesn't use an alignment pin, just clamping force to keep it from moving. After that was all done, I noticed the wires for the right switch cluster, brake switch, and clutch switch really don't have enough room when moving the steering lock to lock, 
and are riding up against the upper steering bearing. Only the left switch cluster wiring has plenty of room since it feeds off the main front harness. So I decided to trace the other wires back to see if I could free them up any. To do this I removed the rear seat by removing the two 10mm bolts and pulling up on the back while sliding it out to the rear. And then remove both of the side covers. To remove the tank set the fuel to the off position and push back the upper fuel hose clamp and pull back on the hose. Be careful a little bit of fuel may spill out so be sure to wear some eye protection and have a rag to catch any fuel. You can also avoid this by running the gas out of the carb after switching to the off position. It's also a good idea to wear eye protection whenever working on your bike. I like to put a plastic bag with a rubber band over the hose to prevent any dirt from falling in because dirt likes to hide under the tank. Remove the 10mm bolt and slide the tank back and up to remove. The front is held on by these rubber thingies. Unfortunately there is no extra slack in the wires I can free up so I decided to extend them. To do this I removed the two belts and unplugged the clutch switch wire and moved it up to see how much longer it needs to be. Looks like 3 inches will do the trick. To do this I'll be cutting 3 inch wires off this old stereo harness and stripping and crimping a waterproof red crimp on each end. There are 8 total wires I'll need to extend so I'll need 16 crimps total. I'll also try to match the colors up the best I can with the ones on the bike since I have so many colors to choose from, but it really isn't necessary. Once those are all done, I'll unplug the connector for the clutch switch wires and cut it off somewhat in the middle. I'll go ahead and trim back the sheaths and strip the wires, then I'll crimp the extensions on. Make sure to tug on them so you know you have a good crimp. Now I'll just use a heat gun to shrink the waterproof part. There is also a glue inside of these that oozes out of the side to give them a perfect seal. I'll finish it off with some electrical tape and then plug it back in. Then I'll do the exact same thing to the other wires, just make sure not to mix any of them up. Once it's all good and they are all plugged in, go ahead and place the two belts back on and reinstall the tank and seat in reverse order. Be sure to place the fuel hose clamp back on properly, wouldn't want that coming off while you're riding. Now on to the clutch cable. There is definitely not enough length, especially when turned all the way to the right, and I would prefer to keep the stock cable routing. To remove the clutch cable, start with the top and loosen the lock nut, and turn the adjuster all the way in. Then at the bottom, loosen up this nut and turn it all the way to the left. Then push the cable end in while holding the clutch actuator and pull it out to the side. Completely remove the nut on the right and pull the cable out of the holder. Back on top, align the adjuster and the lock nut slit and remove the cable. In the end, it will slide right out of the bottom of the lever. I was actually able to find a clutch cable that is 2 inches longer and it says it fits the TW200 so I thought I would give it a try since it was under 12 bucks. Comparing the two cables, they are very similar except the stock one has a heat shield, thicker protection in the middle, and the new one is missing the little bushing around the cable end. Even though it showed it having it in one of the pictures where I bought it from, I can't really complain since it was cheap. I'm going to test fit it on the bike, make sure everything is good. So it looks like it's getting pinched right here in between the steering head and the end stop lug. You can tell the stock one has been rubbing up against the same area and that is why it has really thick protection in this spot. Real quick I'll mark where there needs to be extra thickness on this cable. I'll add some shrink tubing to repair that pinched part while making sure I save the marked spot underneath. I took an old vacuum hose, cut it to match the marks I made, split it down the center with a razor blade, placed it around the cable, added some electrical tape and finished it off with a bigger piece of shrink wrap. I cut each side of the spring and unwound it from the old cable, then wound it on the new cable. This was kind of a big pain, but this part of the cable rides up against the side of the engine, so it's pretty important to have it on there. Next, I carefully removed the bushing part around the cable end. When trying to put the new end in the bushing, I found it was a bit fat and not as long. So I carefully sanded it until it fits in the bushing. I added some lithium grease and placed the top thing back on and pressed it together with some pliers. If you don't use this bushing, it won't really fit right in the lever and it will twist around inside there. Real quick, I'm just going to install the new grips using a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Brake cleaner works pretty well too. Remember the grips are different sizes, so only one will fit the throttle tube. I'll go ahead and cut off the end of the throttle grip so it moves freely. Then I installed the left switch cluster. 
faster. If you have any problems with it moving, even after you tighten it down, you can always use a bit of electrical tape underneath. And of course, don't forget the grip donuts. Now I'll install the cable in reverse order. Make sure to feed it through this metal loop next to the engine. And make sure the return spring fits around like this. Don't forget to add some cable lube. This seriously makes a huge difference on how easy it is to depress the clutch. Make sure the cable fits into the lever with no issues and it moves freely. To adjust the clutch, start out with the adjuster screw on the lever and turn it all the way in. Moving it to the right increases free play and moving it to the left will decrease it. Then tighten the nuts down and you may need to hold one of them with a crescent wrench. Moving back up to the top, turn the adjuster in to increase free play and out to decrease. Once you have 2 to 3 millimeters of free play measured right here, tighten down the adjuster just hand tight. I like to leave a lot of room to adjust it out because the new cables like to stretch a lot when they're new. Now just reinstall the boots and test out the clutch. Now and smooth and it will no longer get pinched with that thicker part on there. Also it's not a bad idea to check the adjustment for the throttle. To do this measure right around here as you rock the throttle back and forth without actually moving the throttle plate. It should be between 2 to 5 millimeters. If it's not go ahead and move this black shield back on one of the cables. Loosen up the lock nut and move the adjuster out to decrease free play and in to increase it. Once it's good, tighten the lock nut and slide the shield back on. If you can't get it into spec this way, there are more adjusters down below. Next, I'll loosen up the bar risers and set them in the position I want. Then I'll evenly tighten down the clamps. I'll just have to use a regular wrench since I won't be able to get a torque wrench to fit. Try to use as much force as it took to remove the bolts. The spec is only 23 newton meters, so it's not a whole lot. Then loosen up the new handlebar clamps and position the bars to your liking. Also make sure they are centered and tightened down with the 6mm hex key. Make sure it is all tightened down, the risers are all the way in, and the caps are evenly spaced. Now just throw those little belts back on and some zip ties to hold the wires to the bars. Since the throttle tube is upside down, I went ahead and covered the drain hole with a piece of electrical tape. Make extra sure that the cables and wires will not bind up or have any issues while turning lock to lock. And we're all done! <sighs> I just need to take a rest for a little bit because... That was way more work than I anticipated. <sighs> oh, where was I? Oh yeah. This is the first time riding with these bars and risers and it made a huge difference. It feels like a completely different bike. So the first thing I mainly noticed when I start riding this, when I went to take a corner on the street, is that the steering is way, way more responsive. And I don't think that's really due to the risers, but it might have something to do with it. I think a lot of it has to do with the bars are more straight, like they're not like bent in towards you as much, I guess, if that makes sense. And I think a part of it is since they're higher up, my elbows aren't like down to my sides as much. Uh, because like just try to do a push-up with your elbows to your side like that It's a lot harder than doing it out to the side like that You can put a lot more force on everything and I feel like that gives you a lot more control uh, when you can do that So that's part of the reason why I want to put these on here, but uh I love them. I might adjust them around a little bit and the levers and everything. Um, as time goes on, we'll just see how it goes. And also, like, on the dirt, I feel like I have more control over the bike. Like, it's a lot more quick and nimble. Like, you, you have so much control over it. Especially standing up. Standing up is, like, probably the best part about putting these on here. It's so comfortable. Now, I am so glad I did this. And like to put things into perspective, I'm not even a tall person. I'm uh, five foot four, which is like really short, but I don't know. I just felt like 
those bars and the location of where I was holding on just wasn't doing it for me. But definitely have no regrets whatsoever. Ah, oh, it's so loud. Ah! Oh, it sounds so cool. Anyways, where were we? So a lot of people say you can reroute the cables and wires somewhere else so you don't have to do as much work. And I'm the only way I can think of is they reroute it up through this way, which I don't know, man. It just seems a little sketchy. I would prefer to like keep the cables exactly where they were stock. So I guess you don't have to exactly do it the way I did it. I just kind of went all out. I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out though. But whatever you guys do, like please just make sure like all the cables and everything are gonna be good and like nothing's gonna get uh caught on anything because the last thing you want is to be like riding down the road or even off-road and have like a cable or a wire like randomly prevent the steering from turning that's like the most important thing you can get out of this and the part where i thickened the clutch cable uh turned out really well it just doesn't have enough room to get pinched in between there anymore so that's really good. I think I'm just gonna leave the bar pad off because I'm getting a uh, highway dirt bikes hand guards. I'm gonna do a separate video on that. I'll at least try to modify it, see if I can get it to fit. Also, it works perfectly fine with my tank bag on here, just like stock. It would kind of touch it a little bit, but it's no big deal. It still turns lock to lock. It just kind of pushes a little bit at the very end. Well guys, I'll be sure to leave links uh, to everything in this video in case you wanna check it out. And also if you buy from one of those links, uh, it will help support the channel, but either way, it's all good. In fact, if you have a motorcycle shop that sells a lot of bars, I would actually recommend going there. Um, and trying them out maybe even taking the stock ones in case uh, you don't want these particular bars because they have so many bends and everything uh, You could probably even find just a higher bar without even putting risers on it There's just so many options with bars. It's it's crazy And if you don't want to go all out like I did and you just want some cheap bar risers uh, Just raise it up a little bit. I'll leave a link to a BWX video You can go check that out if you want to see more about those and also if you guys have any questions at all or you want to see something more in depth on this uh, here TW don't hesitate to leave me a comment and you can also find me on Facebook and I try to respond to everyone's messages and comments well that sun's gone down and this video is getting way too long so thanks for watching guys and I will catch you later peace out